postpone to subject as expected and submit as expected is either they are not born again or they are not truly sanctified. I want to pray our wives will be genuinely sanctified if they are saved and they are sanctified. Submission will not be an issue. Submission to husband will not be a problem. I want to pray our wife will be sincerely and genuinely sanctified. They will submit as prescribed by scripture. They will submit as prescribed by scripture, as described by scripture, not as described by society, not as described by traditions, not as described by culture. Like some people will say, oh, culture of America is different from Nigeria. Yeah, we don't regard men. Yeah, we don't respect men. That is not the culture Christian ought to live with. We don't live by the culture of America. We don't live by the culture of the, the British. We don't live by the culture of the uh, Jami or German people and all of that. No, we live by the culture of heaven. We live by the traditions of heaven. We live by the traditions of scripture, by the culture of heaven, culture of scripture. And what does the Bible says here? That why must subject unto their own husband in everything? Can you imagine scripture? I don't think this is a mistake. The Bible will not have put it this way. If it's a never, never, there cannot be mistake in scripture. It says in everything, in everything. Let's talk to God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, that you touch our wives' heart, Lord, you transform them. As many of them were just saved and are not sanctified, as many of them were struggling with the word submission, and they are wondering, no, I cannot submit. I am equal to the man. I am any more money than the man. My salary is more than the man. And so why should I submit? In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I still want to believe that everyone can hear me. Now, um, um, uh, I read a post sometime uh, last week. Uh, I think last week. In that post, uh, the woman was saying something. Please, I want us to listen to this. What happened was that uh, this woman and her husband, they were arguing, uh, not really arguing, what happened? The man, the woman was any more than the man from the post to, I don't know how true the post can be, but there's a lesson there. The woman said she's any more money or salary than the yeah. husband. So her salary is more. And then, so it's like they share uh, the thing they will take care at home. So the woman takes care of the, the husband takes care of uh, whether the house rent and the, the NEPA bill. Why the woman takes care of the children's school fees, uh, takes care of the major, in fact, he takes care of the many of the things at home. The husband only takes the two things I mentioned. So now, there was this building, the father of the woman was building uh, before the man died. So when the man died, the lady, the wife, now, now continue the building without her husband adding anything. So eventually they were to park, whether they were to park into the new building or they were to park somewhere else, only for the woman to be saying that she is the one that will stay in the master bedroom because she deserves it. Because the husband did not contribute anything and all that. The husband saying he is the one that will stay in master bedroom. And I was wondering, uh -uh, master bedroom, is it one person that stays in master bedroom? Or is it a husband and wife that stays in master bedroom? Ha, egg by me, oh. I, I, I was wondering what kind of uh, what kind of mentality, where are these people getting all this rubbish from? Okay, the woman saying she deserves to stay in master bedroom. Okay, even if the man accepts or accepted, how will you be comfortable staying in the master bedroom all alone? Even sometime I will leave the master bedroom, me as a married man now, and go to another room. Sometimes I do that. I will just leave my wife in the master bed and go to another room. But in the middle of the night, I will wake up and leave. Maybe because I needed something, I will just leave. Or sometimes my wife, will, I remember what she did last week. She even stood up from the bed 
and, and came to the other room. As I heard, I knew she was the one coming. In fact, I maybe as soon as you enter, I just open my eyes and all of that. So what am I saying? How can you even be comfortable sleeping, sleeping comfortably for days separately in different rooms? You are not together. How? How? But that's what we hear. That's what we see. That's what's happening in many homes. And then the woman will feel that, yes, I have this, I have that. I'm any more money than you. It's an aberration. It's an anatomy. It's a misnomer. That's not scripture. It can be practiced in all these developed countries, but that's not Bible. That's not scripture. That's not the word of God. And we are not to live by the culture of the people. We are to live by the culture of heaven. We want to pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord will arrest the act of women who have been totally influenced by the godless culture where they dwell. By the godless culture, I know what I'm saying. By the godless culture where they dwell, the Lord will arrest those women. Are they in the church? The Lord will arrest them. Outside the church, the Lord will arrest them. The Lord will set them free. Some, some were submissive while they were in Nigeria. As soon as they relocate to US or Canada or all those places, uh -uh. they say, come on, she. In a bondage, you will your joy. They feel they were in bondage before. They feel that, ah, 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 see life here. Oh. So, yeah, you don't need to respect your husband. Come on, I like this. They don't know that they're already backsliders. They don't know that they already, they have deviated from God. And the culture of the land begins to influence their life. The culture of the land will not influence me. I will not be influenced by the culture of the land. I dare to be different anywhere I go. I dare to live right anywhere I go. Dare to live. Dare to make a purpose firm. Dare to live like Daniel. Dare to make a decision to be different. Dare. Let's pray for our wife. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm stopping in verse 25. I need to be at work. So I will so my purpose take it till maybe a time before you hand over to Pastor Matthew. Now verse 25, husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for them. Now, he said, husbands, love your wives. Love your wives. A pastor many years ago defined love as leave offenses and value eternity. That's love. Leave of offenses, value eternity. That's love. Love is not just about feeling. Some people take love to be as something sentimental or emotionalism. Not at all. Love is a decision. That is the truth. I have realized personally and i want to say this very well i love my wife now get this clear i love my wife ah it's not just by the word of mouth that i love my wife everybody can say that how do you show that you love your wife now this is it as you get married to a particular woman or sister in the fellowship no doubt you are going to see more women that are more beautiful than your wife there is no amount of beauty your wife would have that you will never see a woman outside one day that will be more beautiful than your wife, that will be more, maybe as a woman, more handsome than your husband, that will, you know, that will, that will not be more catchy, more attractive, more charming, more, more welcoming, more endowed by God than your wife. You will see that. But do you know what? Love is not emotionalism. I have chosen to love this woman irrespective of any woman I see out there. So my eye become closed to every other beauty. Yes, I can say thank God for this woman. She's beautiful. But my eye, my heart was not long after her. My heart is only after someone. And that will be forever and permanently. That's love. That's love. That's love. Even when this woman is in a bad shape as a result of pregnancy and other things, that love must remain firm and fixed and permanent. That's love. 
That's love. I am not waiting until everything is rosy before I declare my love. Love is not emotion or emotionalism or feeling. Love is a decision. It goes beyond emotion. It goes beyond emotionalism. It's decision. I am choosing to love who I mean. I am choosing to love law and joy, and that will be permanently and forever. The offenses will come. I have to leave it. And I have to value eternity on our behalf. We want to pray. Our husband will love their wife indeed, as Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? How did Christ love the church? Let me show us. Let me show us. Romans chapter 5. How did Christ love the church? The answer is there. How did Christ love the church? Look at it. Verse 6. Romans 5, verse 6. For while we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Without strength. Why we were yet, uh, why we were unlovable. Why we were unlovable. That means there are times the wife will misbehave and do something we still have to love. Verse 8, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinner, Christ died for us. That's the love we are talking about here. And then look at it in Ephesians chapter 5, where we are reading now, Ephesians chapter 5, how did Christ love the church? Now, that is for the sinner now, but how did they love the church? Look at it, that in my sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the wall. And so, if if a, 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 a Christian father or husband shows that he loves the wife, and then look at what he will do, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church. Christ loved the church and is cleansing and purging and purifying the church so that the church can be presented to him as a glorious church. I have realized that every woman is beautiful, if you can decorate that woman as expected, give that woman money to change a wardrobe, give that woman money to change a lot of things, you will be shocked and say, what? So this, my wife has such a beauty like this, but many men don't understand. They are looking at all these opaque, all these opaque women, all these opaque women that are dressing seductively outside there, catching men who are not discerning. And then they look at their wives at home. They say, this one, they dress, they dress like Mama Arugbo. They dress like an uh, old mama. They dress like this. They dress like that. Whereas you are not giving that woman money to buy gown, to buy beautiful dresses, to buy this and to decorate herself properly, not in the way of the world, but to look with Christ cleanse the church. And what did he do? So that he will present the church in a way that is presentable, not having spot or rico or any such thing, you, you find it cool on the face of your wife, there are cream you can buy, there are cream you can purchase. That wrinkle can take gold, that spot can remove, but you are not doing that, you are not ready to spend on that woman, and yet you are still the same person complaining that you are you are not, you are looking old. You are, they, they, they will say, hey, our church, the sisters are dressing the, and the man is not doing anything about it. That's not law, let's pray. We will love our wife as Christ loved the church. Let's talk to God. Father in heaven, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will so give us grace and love to love our wives, to care for our wives. In the name of Jesus, Holy Father, righteous God, we depend upon your grace. We ask for your grace. We ask for your strength. We ask for your provision. Who oh, good to be able to make our families, our wives, what it should be to the glory of your name. Father, you have told us who oh, good by your power. Oh Lord, no wife, ugly, every wife is beautiful. If it's she's taking care of. Oh Lord, we pray that you help us by your grace, by your power. Oh God, to be so, so, to so love our wife, to so cherish our wife in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Father, righteous God, we are praying, we are asking that Lord, you will help us by your spirit, you will help us by your power to love our wives, to love our children. Oh God, we are praying that you make our families heaven on earth. In the name of Jesus, make our family, make our family 
heaven on earth in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, help our families. Oh Lord, help our homes. Oh God, we pray that Father, our homes, oh God, will be, oh God, be the object, oh God, Father, of attraction to the world. Our family, oh God, will be Christian family indeed. Our homes will be Christian homes indeed. Oh Lord, I pray, where the love of God reigns, where, oh God, there is submission, where there is caring, there is caring, oh God, Father, for all members of the family, oh Lord, I pray, make our homes, oh God, what you have designed it to be. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Mike. I want to prepare for you. Over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. We are going to continue in that um, line of prayer. A pastor has read from Ephesians chapter 5. And if you look at one of the messages we learned, I think it was on Saturday, how our GS also minister to us on the family, how we can take care of the family. He has given us seven pillars, the seven pillars that will keep our families together. We're going to call upon the name of the Lord. Uh, our pastor has been saying some very crucial, vital areas of the family and how we can keep our families together. Beloved, I think I must tell you at this time that the devil is not happy about Christian families. Anywhere the devil sees that uh, this one is a Christian family, this one is a Christian home, he will fight, he will wage war against the family. And that's why the Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. want to pray. First and foremost, we're going to play, pray for some virtues, some virtues, some virtues that will make our family to be in the right order. We want to pray. First and foremost, we want to pray for the grace of God in the family. Oh God, shower your grace in our family. Oh God, give us grace in the family. If our families are going to be sweeter than honey, we need the grace of God. We need the grace of God. You need to see things with the eyes of God. Open your mouth as an individual. Let's call upon the name of the Lord for our families. Oh God, give, give us give grace us this year. Give us grace this year. Grace, oh God, to be able to love. To love, oh God, without resentment. To love unconditionally. A pastor told us about Christ. How did we know that Christ loved us? He gave himself for us. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Oh God, give me the grace to love. Give me the grace to love. Give me the grace to love. To love irrespective perspective of whatever happened. Give me the grace to love my wife, to love my wife, not to look at the inabilities, not to look at the lapses, not to look at the faults, not to look at the wrinkle, not to look at, look at, oh, this one is there, that one is there. Give me grace to love my wife. Even as a wife, give me grace to love my husband, my, my, my beloved. It will take the grace of God for you to love. It will take the grace of God for you to love. God for you to love. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, help me to love my wife. To so love, so love, so love my wife. Open your mouth and call upon God. Let's call upon the name of the Lord this morning. Let's ask for the grace of God. Oh Lord, give me grace to love. Give me the grace to love. The grace to love. See, if you love your wife, you will not look at her faults. If you love your wife, you will not look at her mistakes. If you love your wife, you will not look at her background. If you love your wife, you know, recently, I don't know if you read that uh, that that viral, that uh, picture, that story online that went viral, that a woman loved a man that was deformed, a man that was deformed, the man, the face of the man was deformed, and the family member said, you can't marry this one, you can't marry this one, but the woman went ahead to marry that man, and now, I think from the picture I saw, they have three children, and they are living happily. But, but the woman didn't look at the deformity. She loved the man. She said, I love him, irrespective of the deformed face. I, my brother, I want to ask you, I want to ask you, do you love your wife? 
your wife is not having any deformity and yet you are not showing the love of God to her. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, give me grace to love my wife. Give me grace as a wife to love my husband. Irrespective of whatever happened, there will be no money. My husband may not have money. My wife may not have money. L let me even say this. Even if your wife is not physically endowed, um, you look at her appearance. She doesn't have oh, what these other women have. She doesn't have this. She, all the same because you are a child of God, a son of the king, a son of the prince of peace. You love the Lord. You will love your wife. You will love your wife. Let's call upon the name of the Lord for the grace of God, the grace to love our wife. Not only our wife, but as parents, we should love our children. We love our children. We love our children. Irrespective of their waywardness, their behavior, their misbehavior, a pastor read to us, how did God show that he loved? How did Christ show that he loved? He said, why we were yet sinners? Why we were yet sinners? Christ died for us. My, my, my sister, my brother, irrespective of what your child has done, irrespective of what your daughter has done. Love your son. Love your daughter. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Let's pray for the grace of God. As I want to ask for the grace of God. Lord, give me the grace. Give me the grace. Give me the grace. Give me the grace. The grace to love my wife, to love my children, to love my family. As a wife, the grace to love my husband. Give unto me, O God. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Let's pray. Let's ask for the grace of God. Let's ask for the love of God. Let's ask that God will so endow all, all the graces we need, all the virtues we need, the virtue of temperance, the virtue of goodness, the virtue of patience, the virtue of tolerance. In the family, we need all these virtues. We need to tolerate one another. We need to love one another. We need to be temperate to one another. We need self-control. It's not every time you talk as a husband, this one has happened, you start to talk, you start to talk. There are times to be quiet. There are times to be quiet. And there are times to speak. Even Jesus Christ, he had time, he was quiet. He didn't talk all the time. Let's ask for the grace of God. Let's ask for the grace of God. You know, a pastor mentioned something that was very vital. He said, if your wife is not having this, your wife is not having this, with money, you can change her, you can transform her. But I want to ask, how many people have the money? How many families can afford the money? Is the money right there? You want to call upon the name of the Lord? At this time, we want to pray. We are at the prayer of Jabez. Oh, that that would just bless our family. Oh, that that would just bless our family. Oh, Lord, bless our family this year. Oh, Lord, bless our family. Oh, Lord, bless the work of our hand. Oh, God, bless the husband, bless the wife. Oh, God, bless the husband, bless the wife. Oh, God, bless us this year. Oh, God, bless us this year. You have told us from the covenant service yesterday that the key is obedience. The key is obedience. When we obey you, you will open doors. When we obey you, you will make us the head and not the tail. When we obey you, blessed shall we be when we go out and when we come in. When we obey you, oh God, you will make us a delight some land. When we obey you, when we follow your instruction, you have told us you are going to bless us beyond measure. Oh God, I pray, oh that that would bless our family. Oh that that would bless our family. Oh God, bless every family. The family of that brother, bless that family. The family of that sister, bless that family. My own family, bless my family. Bless my family. Bless my family. Bless my home. It's on right at home. He said, Father, bless my home. I remember that man. As he, sang, as he sang that song, he said, Father, bless my own. Father, bless my children. Father, bless my wife. Father, bless my family. Father, bless my husband. Can you pray that prayer? Can you bless your family this morning? Can you bless your family this morning? Today is Monday, the 16th day of the month of January. Can you just bless your family? Open your mouth and bless your family. Open your mouth and bless. You are the head. You are the head. And pastor has told us we should not lose our head. We should not lose our head. As the head of the family, don't lose your head. Don't lose your holiness. Don't lose your excellence. Don't lose your anointing. Don't lose your distinctives. Don't lose your head. Open your mouth and call upon the door. In your mouth, there is a word of authority. In your mouth, there is a word of power. Brother, sister, open your mouth and bless your family this morning. Bless your family. Oh God, I bless my family. I bless my family with riches. 
I bless my family with love. I bless my family with all the graces of heaven. I bless my family with all the goodness of heaven. I bless my family with prosperity. I bless my family in every in all ramification. I bless my family in fruitfulness, in prosperity, in harvest, in joy, in love, in peace. I bless my family with all the blessings of heaven. I bless my family this morning. I bless my wife. I bless my children. I bless my relations. I bless my family this morning. Lord, oh that that would have bless us. Oh, that I would have bless me and enlarge my cause. Oh Lord, enlarge every family this morning. Enlarge every family this morning. Every business, enlarge every business this morning. The work of our hand, enlarge us, O God. The work of our hand, enlarge us, O God. What you do for a living, enlarge us, O God. Enlarge us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we want to thank you for this session. As we proceed, let your power, let your presence proceed with us. Thank you for prayers that you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Over to Pastor Matthew. Thank you, in sir. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I really uh, appreciate the uh, the two combinations. And the, uh, as Pastor Mike quickly identified something that is going on in the family. Uh, most essentially is the love. Yes, you want to beautify your husband. You want to beautify your wife, but there's no money. What what we ring is love. When you have the money, yes, you need to do it. Because if you are taking care of your wife, you are taking care of yourself. There is no uh, there is no no error. But if you cannot, the Bible say, do not forget the landmark. In our local language, they say, do not forget where you are coming from. By the time you marry your wife, uh, you will not remember that uh, it doesn't, it is not uh, uh, light in complexion. You don't seem to do this. Before then, what, why? Are you not looking at that before? Then the wife now looking at uh, other men are buying this for their uh, wife. They are doing this for their wife. Don't you know from the beginning that uh, in your local language, Atakuta, Atapata, the day they call your husband. Now, why is it when you marry now, you now remember that other people are buying car for their wife? You or you, husband, you now remember that your, your wife is not having this kind of, even if he does that, can't you see? You now call upon the name of the Lord. The until later. I don't know. When you say something is God will, there is no love. You are deceiving yourself. There is no God will there. Many married couple they don't know because they are frustrated. Maybe because of age. Maybe the family are pushing them. Maybe the nature is pushing them. And they got to say they see that the best thing for me is just to marry. And the kind of the quality they want, although it's not in the in the opposite sense, but that marriage is calling upon them. Everybody is forcing them. The nature is forcing them. And they decided to go for the marriage. Then the love is not there. It was later I discovered in the message of Jesus. When you say this is a God will, but there's no love. That's it's not God will. You will not call upon the name of the Lord. Many people have done that. Uh, during my old age in the, I mean, early age in the, uh, in the campus, we went for a program. And the demand that was leading the program said, I've never seen anybody that beauty like my wife. Uh, in my own nature, in the uh, 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 fleshly uh, uh, nature, the kind of woman I thought the woman was my dear brother. When I know that the woman is beautiful, but it's like I'm very sorry to say this. I'm talking about real love, real love. When we are talking about real love, the something has happened to the woman in the mouth that the mouth is. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. 
it's not straight. The old face. But if you see the way this man described the wife, you will think, uh, I'm very sorry to use, uh, you will think it's Esther. Uh, no, uh, let me use Esther or, uh, yeah. Uh, what is the name? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you will think it's Esther. Very beautiful. You will think it's, it's Esther. There's nothing there. But because of love, it's because of love, he doesn't see anything that is bad in that woman. I wish you were there when he was des describing the woman. You now call upon the name of the law. All the couple that are married on the basis of this will of God, but there's no law. People have been telling me when couple marry and God allowed them, there's a reason for it. That by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, the love that lacks in that family, and it's not existing. And as a result of that, the will of God has gone because the love is not there. God will bring that love back to the family in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us call upon the name of the Lord. Many families are suffering for that. Oh yes, Father, this is the will of God, but there's no law. Where is we law? Where there is law? Why we us run and why we be fighting? Something is no longer. Where is law? Where the us, the wife, the the living lay? He said, this is not marriage. That God made two of you to meet for one purpose, so that one of you will not meet seven. That's why God made two of you. That the, the, what I'm saying, there's no marriage in it. Then if God has a purpose, God is the creator of love. God is the creator of marriage. That by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, it will not too long. For those family that are in that kind of situation, but by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God will shower his mercy upon their family in Jesus' name. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. If I let me know that the fire that we have come to head, I will not bring it up to you. Let's pray for all this kind of family that I will go through, that everyone to use more for another one to make it to the kingdom of God. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power and the power of Jesus Christ, it will not too long before God will show his mercy upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm begging them, the couple, my dear brother, my dear sister, I want to tell you something. When we say something is one, when we say something is one, if the air is sick, the body is sick, if the leg is sick, the head is sick, but if we marry, the, the wife 
be sick, God's wife is not concerned. The husband may be sick, the wife is not concerned. The wife may not eat, the husband is not concerned. The husband may not eat, the wife is not concerned. We even see them crying. I mean, the man who let things so that the order we fall down.
or people who are suffering because of their marriage, both internally and externally, by the power and the blood of Jesus, God will visit them in Jesus' name. And he will yes. redeem their marriage in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. Yes. In Jesus' name yes. we pray. Land of us. Yes. I don't know if Pastor Yomi is online again. Rando for us, sir, Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike, Rando, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to thank you. We want to bless your name for the privilege we have to call upon you on behalf of our family. Father, from our heart of heart, we have poured out our heart unto you. Father, that you will intervene in all our family and marriages. Father, we are praying and we are asking that families who both that are going through wounds and injuries, who oh Lord, we pray that with the blood of Jesus, you will heal all our families in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we are asking that, Father, have we prayed for our family? I pray, Lord, the Bible says, and the Lord will arrive and have mercy on Zion. Oh Lord, I pray that this morning, on this 16th day of the month of January, Father, we pray you will arrive and you will show our families mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, all families all over the world, Father, you know them, the family of the Father in America, you know them in North America, you know them in South America, you know them, the family of God in Asia, the families in Africa, the families in Europe, the families in Arctic region, the family in Australia, all the families all over the world, those at the end, at the bed of Britain, even the family in the church, the family by Britain, who got the family in our district, in our location, who got that are at the bed of breaking at the edge of collapsing. Holy Father, we pray, O oh God, that with your mighty intervention, you will come into that family, you will intervene in that family, you will reunite that family, you will bless the family, and our family will rise up again with the wings of the hero in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we want to thank you for leader who has led us today. We pray for more grace upon his life. Amen. The power of his life. Oh Amen. God, I pray you will shower him with more wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh God, that all our pastors, every one of us without exception, oh God, we pray. Oh God, we pray that our families will be everyone on earth. Oh Lord, Amen. We pray, whatever is lacking, when Jesus came to the marriage at Cana, there was no wine. There was no wine. And when Jesus saw there was no wine. Provided the wine when the wine was finished, when there was no more wine. Oh God, in the family, there is no doubt we are going to get to a junction, a section, a, a period in our life, in our family, that there will be no more wine. Father, we are praying. At such a time like that, I pray, Father, with your divine power, your divine intervention, you will supply fresh wine, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we want to bless you as we continue with this world. As some of us going to work, some people doing their businesses. I say, Lord, you will bless us beyond measure in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for prayer we are entered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Goodness and blessings are for us all the days of our lives. In the hands of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you all. By the power and the blood of Jesus, all of us will enjoy our marriage in Jesus' name. Or definitely against our ministry, against our marriage, God will take away in the name of Jesus Christ. If He can Amen. die to redeem us, He will redeem our marriage. Because if there's no us, there will be no marriage. And the joy of the Lord will put all our hearts in Jesus' name. Thank Amen. you. God bless you all. Thank you so much.
trust in Jesus and he will lead the way. Don't be like doubting Thomas, just lean upon his promise. Why worry, worry, worry when you can pray? Why worry when you can pray? Trust in Jesus and he will lead the way. Don't be like doubting Thomas, just lean upon his promise. Why worry, worry, worry when you can pray? Why worry? Trust in Jesus and he will lead the way. Don't be like doubting Thomas, just lean upon his promise. Why worry, worry, worry? Call upon me in the time of trouble. Call upon me, I will answer you. In the time of trouble, call upon me, I will, I will answer you. In the time of trouble, the time of trouble. Amen. We answer in Jesus' name. You are all welcome to today's Monday Bible study in Jesus' name. This I need to remind us, both when we are here to worship at Bagada headquarters and all our districts, there shouldn't be any clapping at the time of welcoming the visitors and after choir ministration, both here and all our districts. We also welcome those who are coming here tonight for the first time. So if tonight is your first time to come here to worship with us, we recognize your presence and we want you to know that you are in the right place. And by the grace of God, the Lord who has been meeting us and blessing us through, the, uh, through our pastor, the communion of GCK, we also bless you in Jesus' name. Anywhere you are, God bless you. You are welcome. Also, let's listen to this following announcement. N next Monday, the 23rd, Old Alima Show Braden are to be here for the Monday Bible study with Shomulu Ketu Bagada and Old Fesak will be here the Monday Bible study after the Global Crusade of January. That will be in February. They will be here. And anytime we are coming here, we should come with the Global Crusade converts and visitors. Those invitees by 5.45 p.m. The January edition of the GCK Global Crusade with Pastor GCK Global Crusade with Kumoye comes up in Asaba Delta State of Nigeria from Thursday, 26 January to 31st January 2023. Publicity is to be on in earnest in all our districts and in the groups. And by the grace of God, next Sunday will go out for the mass publicity. We believe you have been doing the person-to-person uh, -person contact. The venue is Senator behind the House of Assembly of Okina Palm Road, Asaba, Delta State. The theme is Unforgettable Encounter with the God of Wonders. It also features Impact Academy for the youth and young adults captioned wonderfully made for, the excel for excellence on Saturday, 
28 January 2023. Also, the Minister Conference for all ministers and professionals of all cadres will come up on 27, 28, 30, and 31st of January. The theme is Encountering Wonders in Life and Ministry. It is a responsibility that all the pastors all around us and all our members, should, they should be at this crusade. And our crusade will be outside, not inside the church building, please. Take note of that. And uh, there's a special program coming up this Saturday for the Yoruba church workers. It's a church program team, Aquero. Our own responsibility there is that with the Yoruba brethren around us, they will give us the letter of invitations to, for other churches that are Yoruba speakers or they have Yoruba section in their churches so that we invite them to come here this coming Saturday in the morning. Let's be here at late, 8 o'clock. And by the grace of God, we have made transportation arrangements for all our Yoruba workers and our invitees. So we are believing God that we should see it as the church program, not as Yoruba section or Yoruba church program. It's our program. And as we obey and we come into the program and we are involved, the Lord will bless us for our faithfulness in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much, and God bless you. We we'll now rise up to sing from our gospel hymns and song number one. Gospel hymns and songs number one. All your anxiety. Is there a heart overbound, overbound by sorrow? Is there a life weighed down by care? Come to the cross, each body bearing all your anxiety, leave it there. No other friend so keen to help you. No other friend so quick to hear. No other place to leave your body. No other one to hear your prayer. Come then at once, delay no longer. He is entreaty, kind and sweet. You need not fear a disappointment. You shall find peace at the mercy seat. All your anxiety, all your care, bring to the mercy seat. Leave it there. Never a body it cannot bear. Never a friend like. Jesus.
Today we are going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. Exodus. Chapter 1. Exodus. Chapter 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them.